So while we sit here and watch some video of the new Defender coming and going, I guess, uh, you know, I, I, I want to do a little talk about everything that they got wrong. You know, I guess this kind of uh, foreshadows my hopes of this, this Defender is coming and going. I hope it doesn't stay around long. Now, I, I, I need to talk about everything that I feel is really wrong with this Defender and why this is such a major, major disappointment, especially for North Americans uh, who've waited 23 years to get a Defender here and, um, and then they sell us this, uh, you know, this, this uh, discovery with makeup on it, you know, Botox injected, uh, sculpted, uh, tummy tucked discovery. That's all it is. Anyway, so uh, we'll go through a few things. I'm just going to kind of break it down. There's a bunch of different things. I know there's a lot of people out there who uh, they, you know, the biggest thing for them is solid axles. Uh, that's not really my concern. I'm not really going to get into that. I'm not going to get into the mechanical side of it. I think, uh, you know, as much as I hate this because it's a discovery, if they had a call to discovery, I would have loved it. Um, I, I'm not downing on discoveries because I love discoveries. I loved all of them. Um, and, and I think they're great vehicles in their own right. You know, they're just not defenders. So uh, we're going to have a little talk about what the differences are and, and you know, fundamentally and, and why it's such a big deal for us uh, as uh, North Americans not to get a proper defender back. And, and we'll talk about some of the, the design things and how if they had got the design right, maybe this would have been palatable. Now, the naming is, is the first part, you know, I, I guess uh, I have a hard time calling these discoveries, uh, you know, I always type it out with a small d. The The next part of that, though, is is the designation. The, the 90 and 110 uh, are, are an absolute no-no in, in my book. You know, you went on with 70 years of, of tradition of naming the vehicle after the wheelbase, or at least within a few inches of the wheelbase. You know, when they, when they said a 90, they actually had a 93-inch wheelbase, but they called it a 90. You know, and the 110 was a 110 inch wheelbase. Um, you know, these are uh, 101 and 119. So, you know, my opinion, they, they should have been called Defender 100 and Defender 120. And, and the biggest part of that issue is, is they would have uh, di differentiated from the original. So something that carried through there in this original you know, whether it was the Series 1, you know, the original Land Rover, the Series 2, the Series 3, didn't matter whether it was an 80 or an 87 or a 109, uh, they always had round headlights, and they always had like a square placard that the headlights were on, uh, and a flat kind of face on the front. They always had a trapezoidal hood, uh, you know, or bonnet, if you're British, and they always had triangular uh, fender tops, or, you know, uh, wing tops if you're British so so those were fundamental you know design cues uh, of the Defender that that came kind of from the Jeep uh, those not only were there but they were also copied by the G-Wagon um, those those cues uh, came to represent a, a, a you know a defined off-road utility vehicle and uh, and it's really disappointing to see that Land Rover has walked away from that design. Now, this being the new face of Defender, um, it, it's really disheartening to to look at. You know, the um, it, especially to to watch the the engineers and the designers say, "Oh, you know, we've we've kept the uh, the square circles and squares and." And uh, when you know, when you look at it and you say there's no squares and there's no circles there, there's crescents and parallelograms at very best. And, and, and the design cues are all discovery, every bit of it. You know, the way that the hip line runs across the face of the hood, that's discovery. The way that it has a flat top hood, that's a discovery. The way that it has parallelograms instead of squares, that's a discovery. The crescents inside there, that's discovery. Everything on the front of the face of this is discovery. So here's here's a good example. So there's the original. 
Now the hip line starts at the C pillar, but it's chamfered. It comes around, it goes around the front of the hood. You've got parallelogram uh, headlights and, and with with what are cut off circles, which are you know end up being crescents if they had a ring around them. So the next uh, the next design is the Discovery Three Discovery Four body style, and, and you can see it even more here in this Discovery Four or the LR Four. You can see that kind of they they squared that crescent, but it's still parallelograms, you know, rectangles, not not really rectangles, but close, and and you've got that crescent shape inside. You still have that chamfered edge that runs out and across the bonnet. You have a flat bonnet. Now this is kind of before the the Discoverer, the Defender got the the power bulge. But if you took the power bulge off the new Defender, it would look just like this. And really that's because this is what the new Defender is. So my expectation is, is and, and I thought of this years ago, is, is they'll probably take the plant from England, move it somewhere else, move all the machinery there. They'll update the vehicle a little bit, and they're going to resell this vehicle as the new Defender. And, uh, you know, I always wanted to uh, pick up one of these uh, LR4s and and have somebody make a, a hood with, a, you know, the parallelogram and the triangles. Now, when you look close at the at the new design, you can really see how those those edges and stuff are really just a, a modernization of that discovery design. Um, you know, if you took this this little bulge there out, which is another thing that really irks me, is seventy years of a of a trapezoidal hood, and and Ford goes in and puts in a power bulge to fit a motor, and that's the design cue that they keep. Now just have a look at some of these front end designs and, and you'll see, uh, you know, this is a second generation. Uh, it's just a little clearer with these headlights in the second gen than the first gen. Now there is a Discovery Sport headlight and you can see that, that crescent, that cut off circle, that design, you know, is that's Discovery Sport. You can see the chamfered edge, you can see that there's no uh, trapezoidal hood. You know, these, uh, there's another one, the same with the, with that cut off round headlight look. As a matter of fact, when you look at any one of the, any one of the designs except for the Range Rover, they all have that, uh, that chamfered edge look all the way around the front of the hood. Now, I believe if they had a got this design right, if they had done this on the front of what they built, they probably would have got much more acceptance. If they had that triangular wing tops instead of that weird shape that they have, if they had a kept the 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 hood shape, the the trapezoidal hood shape, instead of getting rid of that tradition and get just keeping that little bulge that they put in there to fit that slightly taller motor, you know that that was only around for for a few years. And uh, anyway, this is this is problem number one. So we'll just say the major problem number one is the face. And if they had to get the face right, they probably would have got most things right. right. Now the next part of it is the side profile of the vehicle. And some of this is nitpicky and some of it is absolutely fundamental. So in, in, in that fundamental, the first thing I'd say on the fundamental side is, is the Alpine window. The Alpine window in a 110 is, is almost completely above the second row. Okay. And, and the Alpine window in a Discovery is almost completely in the load area or the third row. And, and this is something that they got wrong on the new uh, Defender. Is, is that on the 110 version, oh I hate saying that. The, the, that is, it's almost completely, it's not completely, but almost completely over the, uh, over the load area or the third row. The other two issues are you know, on this, the, the, the hip line is round and it curves down at the front. Uh, and that round had a nice feeling to it. The second thing is the windows. The A pillar, the B pillar, the C pillar, and the D pillar were all painted. Um, and, and what they did there, that, that's another, that's a whole other issue. So, but that's, um, that's a bit of a rip off and, and we'll get into that next. After the hip line. Now that quarter round hip line gets shaved off 
and on the new car you can see it, it's a chamfered edge that's on a on an angle and, and you can see the way that they did that black line down and the stanced out part to make it look like a wide body and and that that to me is a complete rip off of of the con design so con design and chelsea tractor they sell they sell these redone units in britain and here's one so you, you can see and when they did their their body kit it gives a chamfered edge instead of the round and when you look close you can see that widened part and and it stops at the door and restarts at the front of the door and, and that wide body design is what they're trying to emulate in this new defender design so they take a discovery they put a wide body light -like kit on it to make it look like the things that you'd see in Chelsea you know what Top Gear might refer to as the Chelsea tractor so so what they're talking about is, is these defenders that are made to be fancy and now what what Land Rover's done is they're going out and they're ripping off the design of the of the companies that that rebuild these vehicles and make them into fancy vehicles and now they're they're ripping off that design that you'd see uh, you know downtown London and and they're putting that on this new defender you know so and here's here's a, a the front fender on that and this shows you you can see two things you can see that chamfered edge uh, the way that that design goes and the other thing that you see here on the outside that you now see in the inside is you see those exposed bolt heads so that commercial design uh, that you were seeing inside the vehicle now and this is where it came from Again, this is another con design uh, off of a, a, off of a Chelsea truck, and um, but again, this was not a Land Rover design element. So again, you've got an interior design element, an exterior design element, pasted on a Discovery and sold as a Defender. The next thing to talk about uh, is window design. So this is what the original, this is what Land Rover produced, and this is the way they came out of the factory. There was a whole bunch of different windows, all the pillars were painted, um, and that was Land Rover's design. So that's the way the Defender was, uh, but there were companies that produced other products that went in place of that. So one of the great things about the Defenders was you could just chock-a-block, take things out, and put other things in. Now the new Defender uh, kind of looks like this. Now they also offered it, uh, the original design when it came out had a block on the side. But, but they have this blacked out design and it doesn't look anything like the original Defender did. Now, when you, when you think, okay, well, where would that have come from? Like, why would they all of a sudden do that? Well, the next part is, is really, this is where it came from. So there's a company called Maasai and, um, and they sell these, these uh, panoramics, they call them, which is a solid blacked out window. And these windows are all over London. Everybody that drives an old Defender has them done. Now, the big thing is, 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 is that is a 100% trademarked, copyrighted product that, um, you know, that they basically plagiarized, copied the design, and, and tried to cover it up with that, uh, with that square floating block. So where would this design have come from, this square? You know, this floating square in the middle of the windows over the rear wheel as a design element. You know, something on a vehicle, a square on a vehicle that no longer has any squares. You know, the taillights are squirkles and the headlight buckets are parallelograms. So why do we need this square element on the side and who thought of it? Where would they have ever seen that before? Oh yeah, that's right, Maasai. Masai4x4.com. They sell those panoramic windows and they sell them for one tens that are two doors. And they just happen to have an optional sliding window that's a square that just happens to be midway in the glass and just happens to be over the rear wheel. You know, something that's been out for a couple of decades, something that's well known on the streets in England uh, as a design that's out there that everybody's seen. And now all of a sudden it shows up on this new Defender and everybody, you know, is just amazed at how this design is being passed off. Well, it is not a new design. It's a total ripoff. This is plagiarism, you know, on, on a design level. 
And if it was picked up by a, a prof at a university, the, they would have, the student would have been kicked out. The difference is this is being done by a prof and being sold to the public. So that was problem three. Now problem four was just really about capacities. You know, the original, you could get a 110 in a three door that, seated, that would seat 11. You could get a five door that seated 10 or nine. Uh, you know, these new units, they only, they only seat seven. And that seems like a real problem to me. And you got a vehicle that goes from 11 passenger seating, uh, it grows in size and grows in weight. Uh, but now it only, you know, you're only seating seven, which is about 65% or so of what its original seating capacity was. That's one of the major failings, I think, of this new 110. Uh, the other the other issue is is it really doesn't do anything that the discoveries don't do, you know the or the Range Rover Sport it hauls the same seven people through the same you know 300 millimeters of water towing the same 8200 pound trailer it, it, it's really the same product, you know. Anyway, I just want to leave you with a few pictures, some more you know things to, just to make you think. I hope that you see what I see when you look at this vehicle now. It's 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 just a Frankenstein of ripped off design cues placarded onto a Discovery to try and sell it off as a Defender so that they could charge more money for it. And and I mean not really to charge more money, just to be able to get sales out of it. You know this to me, um, it's a hodgepodge. You know a pig in a poke. It, it it's a it's a you know they moved it out of the country to try and find cheaper labor uh, everything they could do to try and get higher profit margins out of a 20 year old platform that they're going to market as groundbreaking